Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. In our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Caldwell Soames and OG Pay, today we have our returning contributor, Paul Caldwell, chairman and CEO of Caldwell Soames, and we're chatting with his good friend, Thomas Carter, an entrepreneur, a CEO, and a futurist. I love that. Thomas is the founder of Dealbox, and he's the current interim CEO of Total Network Services, which is a global blockchain infrastructure, naming services, and applications technology company. Now, as an emerging leader in fintech, Thomas always looks deeper into the utility of blockchain. Dealbox brings SEC-compliant tokenized securities into capital markets. Today, we're chatting fintech, NFTs, blockchain, and tokenization. Now, non-fungible tokens are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on a blockchain and can't be replicated. They can represent real-world items, anything from artwork to real estate. Tokenizing these real-world tangible assets makes buying, selling, and trading them more efficient while reducing the probability of fraud. However, behind the fanfare of owning digital items is a much bigger and more important picture. NFTs are on the verge of completely revolutionizing trade finance and global commerce. There's the potential to tokenize a wide range of assets and connect real world finance origination to the decentralized finance, otherwise known as DeFi markets. Trade finance instruments, such as fixed income products and investment notes, can securely move along the blockchain in a manner that brings transparency, facilitates seamless settlement, and extends liquidity. At the same time, smart contracts eliminate intermediaries, reduce counterparty risk, and preserve the integrity of deliverables. We're talking about a new class of financial assets, as well as a significant overhaul to almost every payment system financial service, and supply chain in the world. And it may be coming sooner than most think. Knowing that almost anything can become an NFT, how do you go about tokenizing your existing assets is the real question. Artist Mike Winkleman, otherwise known as Beeple, remember him? He sold the NFT of a digital image collage for $69 million. That's right, $69 million. Sounds good, right? You could sell any of your assets or artwork at such a price. Probably not. But by tokenizing your assets, you can make a digital representation of the asset using blockchain technology. And that is where the gold is. Here to chat some more is Thomas Carter and Paul Caldwell. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hey there. Hi, Zen. Nice to have both of you on. Great to be here. Thomas, I'll start with you. Great to have you on. Um, what does one need to really know about asset tokenization? And really, what are the most important steps for developing um, non-fungible tokens for your assets? Well, I think when you talk about uh, non-fungible and um, like security tokens, it's it's really two different things. The, the Looking at tokenization for real world assets in terms of securities or uh, tokenizing revenue you could tokenize debt. You could tokenize equity. Those are security tokens. You're going to have to follow uh, security guidelines like Reg D, um, SEC framework for those types of opportunities. Uh, when it, when, and also with NFTs, I think we're going to find that a lot of the NFTs that currently exist might have uh, regulatory challenges. Interesting. So essentially... If you if you look at the whole picture, what is asset tokenization? I mean, is it really referring to the process of creating digital tokens that represent ownership of a real life asset, yeah. really as commonly known as NFTs? Is that really the bottom line? Well, again, the NFT is going to be a non fungible. I think when you talk about securities that need to trade, those might those would be fungible. Those would be so fungible. Those those would be fungible. So uh, an example, like a real life example, is we just did a security token off my uh, the company Dealbox. That's what we focus on, both uh, regu- um, traditional offerings and uh, security token offerings. So with uh, Total Network Services, we just did a security token offering where we tokenized the revenue in that case. And um, it's uh, and I think investors might like the idea of tokenizing revenue because they're going to get a piece of the uh, revenue as opposed to waiting for a dividend. So it might be a a little faster transaction. And also that's going to help with uh, uh, capital formation because you could get more creative with capital formation uh, in terms of ownership by 
uh, perhaps tokenizing uh, the revenue, and then th therefore you're not going to be maybe giving up as much equity at that uh, point in time. Got it. Got it. That makes total sense. Um, Paul, so uh, piggybacking off, off what Thomas just said, so NFTs, for example, could allow startups really to create digital representations of commodities and explore new models of raising capital through this frictionless system that we're talking about. And furthermore, uh, the structure and transparency of blockchain makes it relatively easy for any entity to stay inside a regulatory framework. And once those frameworks are fully locked down is really kind of where you kind of see its full potential. But in fact, everything from debt management processes to the, to the provenance of goods can be streamlined and verified using NFTs. Some say this is the beginning of a new paradigm. Talk to me about uh, commercial tokenization solutions here and how um, it, it parlays. I think um, to, to Thomas's point, if if one can appreciate the, the reality uh, out in the world, it, you know, a regulated environment is always a more trusted environment, certainly certainly at the commercial level or uh, in, in the capital market space, in any case. Um, I, I often get asked about cryptocurrencies, you know, as is there a cryptocurrency carlet? Is it a good hedge against, um, you know, equities? And I, I, I'd say absolutely not, unless you wanted to draw a carlet against maybe technology, certain technology stocks and Bitcoin or something, maybe you could build a correlation there. But Correlation doesn't equal causation. I don't think great companies' equities um, live or die by or even correlate to what goes on in the cryptocurrency markets, frankly. I, and, and also in our funds, I should say that our, you know, we're much more bullish on, on blockchain than we are on cryptocurrencies. That's, that's a whole other thing. I think I should just put that out there. NFTs, on the other hand, very interesting. Non-fungible tokens, tokenizing things that are important in commerce, in commercial uh, uh, commerce and and things like um, real property um, titles is a good example maybe of that of that um, if you're tokenizing uh, them for a particular reason tokenization nfts and uh, married to digital rights management for example thomas and his team have built this um this uh uci uh, uh, yeah, this this technology uh, that's that I think is it's a universal um, process yeah. or, or or whatever a technology for for security. I think that kind of thing married to digital rights management as well, where people can own their own data and sort of create their own personal identity passport, is is also great. That gets down into the individual layer, but think about businesses doing this. Yes. Well, I also think, Zen, if you look at CorpCoin, um, which is one of the original digital corporation in our portfolio, one of their assets, very interesting on what they're doing with um, their ability to tokenize and, and replace the need for factoring or the need for commercial paper using that particular um, tokenization uh, Interesting. Technology. Let me go back to Thomas because I just want to get his perspective on something that you're talking about. But so if you're taking that, you can you can also off, obviously what we're saying is you can tokenize intangible assets like patents and trademarks and copyrights and carbon credits, et cetera. But Thomas, let's chat tokenization and contracts, which is really your specialty here. So you can also tokenize contract agreements themselves with liability NFTs and asset NFTs, which are created to show ownership of a given contract for the promise or two party who makes a promise and the promises, so to speak, the party receives the benefits of a contract. For business and trade finance, this opens up a whole new world of possibilities for handling sensitive data. Uh, is this really solving a real world issues here? In, real world issues here, and is mass adoption uh, just around the corner? In your opinion? Yeah. So uh, a little bit to unpack there. I think um, regarding mass adoption, I think there uh, another another challenge that uh, you know people look at that long alpha numeric hexadecimal address, you know, for a blockchain address. And I think we're seeing the same thing that happened with um, uh, the internet and IP. And I think you can make the correlation there. Like we had IP addresses and until domain names came on top of that, it, it, it then we, everything took off. We don't want to go to 212.185.684. How do you market that? But when you could put a, a name over it, like, um, you know, dollar sign Bill or dollar sign Larry or dollar sign Mary or any of those, it's going to make it a lot easier. So that's another technology that we uh, developed at uh, Total Network Services, and that's going to help with adoption. And I think also security is a big thing. You know, you, you mentioned um, 
uh, you know, the security layer. And that's, that's critical. Uh, again, going to uh, Paul, we had the uh, universal uh, identifier, which is um, the UCID. And uh, that's a very, uh, we're, we're very excited about that because um, essentially what we could do is we've, we've taken the mobile equipment identifier that's on uh, mobile devices and we've tokenized it. So there's a great example of an NFT where we have a one for one for that specific device. And by doing that now we could, um, uh, we could authenticate that device. So uh, with the UCID, we're able to tokenize um, uh, mobile equipment identifiers and that could provide software and hardware bill of materials. So, um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of fraud out there. And I think when you can apply um, tokenization, both NFTs uh, and uh, um, security uh, security tokens, you've got a winning combination. And I think, um, again, uh, the security tokens um, in, in capital markets is going to reduce a tremendous amount of friction. It's going to make things a lot easier. I mean, think about it. You don't have to wait for settlement. Ultimately, when all this goes uh, to mass adoption, you get real time. Who, who likes to wait for a paper certificate? What if you yeah. get it instantly? So instantly. there's going to be a lot of benefits. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, the future looks bright for uh, this technology. And, um, you know, we're excited to be working on both uh, sort of both instances, both with Dealbox and TNS. All right, gentlemen, I'd love to get both your perspectives on this. So, Thomas, we'll start with you first. If you're tokenizing something that you own just for yourself, then you only need to comply with local monetary transaction laws paying any necessary taxes while transacting online, so to speak. Usually the tokenization platforms take care of taxing you. But in crowdfunding scenarios, you'll need to create solid legal documents per se. And that's especially crucial if you're transferring partial rights of patents, trademarks, or real estate, for instance. Um, what are the advantages of regulated tokenization with real assets behind them? Well, you're gonna, uh, and thank you, you're gonna, you're gonna remove a lot of friction. Um in the whole entire process, uh, you got tradability uh, because now you could uh, these these digital assets I think could trade freely. Um, you know, security tokens uh, will follow uh, security digital assets. Security tokens will follow regulatory regulatory framework. So, like Reg D type of offerings, Reg D five hundred six will allow you to generally solic uh, solicit solicitate those offerings. Um, you know, we're seeing I think everything is going digital like i mean the world bank just put out a report that uh they expect um uh security tokens to have 162 trading and, and trading volume in 2030 and four trillion of assets being tokenized wow. and if you guys are familiar with the uh, depository trust corporation dtcc i encourage you to do a little bit research on there they're talking you know they're they're, they're already moving towards this so there's uh, in terms of um you know, advantages, I just think, you know, uh, stop markets um, open and close, right? So when they're closed, what do you do? You know, how are you trading these types of things? So I think, you know, having the the 24 seven ability to trade these, removing the friction and capital markets around um, all the things that take place and having uh, the, the digital security smart contract, a lot of those are gonna be more efficient, effective ways to, uh, you know, it's all, it's, everything's moving digital. That makes total sense. Thank you, Thomas, for simplifying that for us. All right, Paul, in your perspective, what are the advantages of regulated tokenization with real assets behind them? Generally speaking, uh, from from a uh, from from a market's point of view, anytime uh, something can have an impact on uh, liquidity and the provisioning of liquidity, if you get more efficient with liquidity provisioning, then that's going to be a good thing. Um, so. At the end of it, I think there's a lot that could be talked about on the advantages of, of tokenization. To, to Thomas's point about DTCC, that's a really good one to, to look at, right? Um, because at the end of the day, that, that digital trading platform where you can register all of your, your you, know, you can file your 8K or your Form 10 with an 8K in it, and you can just put it up there. And then if you need a 144, letter or something you know and then you, you want to get us get an equity onto your onto your portfolio from broker to broker it, it creates degrees of efficiency that's what that that did right um there's other things that are going on there are other things going on with the with the federal government right now and some of the things they're planning on that really make a big difference and i think it's going to it in its of itself is going to become a disruptor in some regard i mean the if you think about the new 
real-time ACH. So ACH went, which is which is NACHA. It's called NACHA. ACH went from ACH to then instant ACH to now mid next year real time ACH. So that has a tr- the, from from instant to real time has a dramatic effect on payments technologies. But you know we look at all, all day long. We look at these things here in our in our port on our portfolio because we have payment assets in our portfolio in the payment space. And you look at that and say, well, geez, you shouldn't shouldn't just be coding and integrating like a an IO or checkbook IO or a plaid in to get boarded and linking your payments platform to your bank account and everything. Okay, that's fine. But who's who's got the who's winning the race to directly onto uh, integrated with Notch? So you can do real time ACH. When you do that, a lot of those kind of intermediary companies easily get disrupted. So you have to think about all the things that are going on. It's not just the exciting things in the press and cryptocurrencies and, and all of that. There, there's a regulatory framework that's going to have an impact on all of this going forward. And what I like about Thomas is he's kind of come from the wakeboard hall of fame to the front cover of CEO magazine. And he understands all of this, him and his team, they absolutely get it. So I, I just wanted to say that it, it's important to have like a 360 view of the whole thing. Well said, my friend. Well, you've definitely simplified it for us. I want to thank you both for coming on and answering my questions. Definitely my experts at hand. Should I need any any kind of information with respect to fintech, with respect to blockchain, NFTs, I'm coming to Thomas Carter and Paul Caldwell. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Hey, thanks, everybody. Good Take to care. be here. The only thing holding back this industry is for more players to recognize what is happening and seize the opportunity while it is still early. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Caldwell Soames and OG Pay. Definitely check out Thomas Carter at thomascarter.io and head to ogpay.com for all your trusted banking needs. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OGPay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OGPay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Welcoming back in our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Caldwell Soames and OGPay.com. We are featuring Thomas Carter, founder of Dealbox and interim CEO of Total Network Services, otherwise known as TNS, which is an ecosystem of apps and technologies enabling the new blockchain economy. You can check them out at totalnetworkservices.io. Thomas, welcome back to the show, my friend. Hey, hi there, then. So let's talk about trade finance. So trade finance also faces complex regulatory and supply chain procedures involving multiple moving parts and requires a great deal of trust. Um, It's also a sector that remains highly susceptible to document fraud. Now, NFTs can remove those barriers, eliminate fraud, and reduce reliance on middlemen by tokenizing assets and documents into a single immutable digital token. Talk to me about linking digital rights management to security through NFT-based UCID, utilizing TNS's universal communication identifier. Yeah, so the universal communication identifier is a great uh, solution, I believe, for digital rights management uh, amongst a lot of different things because you're you're authenticating. If you could authenticate um, provenance and authenticate uh, software and hardware, you're going to be in a good position to sort of understand when threats come in. You're going to be able to uh, see sort of, sort of everything is being hashed. If, if, if nothing is being, if something comes into the network that, doesn't have a hash it's going to be detected and i think um you know those types of um capabilities provide uh you know the the solution that that folks that want digital rights management and and provenance and authenticity and the universal uh, communication identifier 
uh, does provide that. Yes, I mean, what you guys are doing at Dealbox and at TNS is quite remarkable. You guys are at the forefront of this and definitely are going to be one of the, the pillars of the infrastructure that this industry is going to require, especially with blockchain and going into Web3. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. Thomas, always a pleasure chatting with you. I, I'd invite you to come back on anytime you want. Paul, sure. you know how I feel about you, my friend. Thank you. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Caldwell Soames and OGPay.com. That was Thomas Carter. Definitely check him out. ThomasCarter.io. And make sure you're also checking out Total Network Services. You can check them out at TotalNetworkServices.io. And definitely make sure you're heading to OGPay.com for all your trusted banking needs. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.